differences between trackers and other DAW software. To get you making music with pressing as quickly as possible, let's take a look at the biggest differences between traditional DAWs and trackers. Maybe the biggest difference between trackers and other DAW software is how they assign instruments to the notes they play. Regular DAW software dedicates a whole track for a single instrument. So if you want to have four instruments in your song, you'll also have at least four tracks. For example, track one could be your drums, track two your bass, track three your lead instrument, and so on. This is not the case with trackers. With trackers, your tracks can be playing multiple instruments at the same time. This is because trackers traditionally define the playing instrument information for each note in your song instead of defining it per track or per MIDI clip. Let's have a look what this means in practice. This list on the right side of the screen contains all the instruments in my project. I can play them just by selecting one of them and then playing keys on my MIDI controller or computer keyboard. Let's say I want to edit the instrument number 4, which is a MIDI instrument. I double-click the column with the text MIDI, and I end up in this screen. Alternatively, I could have just selected the instrument from the list and clicked this icon on the left side of the screen. In this screen, I can set my MIDI output port, MIDI channel, and the patch number for this instrument. I have already set this correctly, so I'll move on to creating a MIDI clip. I click this icon right here to get back to the timeline editor screen. To create a MIDI clip, I just paint an area with a mouse, right click, and select Add Clip. Now my new clip's content is shown on the lower part of the screen. To edit my MIDI clip's content, I just click the content area with my mouse and start adding note data. Alternatively, I can just hit the Enter key to go in and out of editing mode. The orange border color indicates that I can now edit my MIDI clip content. I can move around the clip content with cursor keys and mouse. I'll enter some notes using my MIDI controller. Then I hit spacebar to start the sequencer so I can hear how it all sounds. By pressing spacebar again, I stopped the playback. This is the column which shows which instrument is used to play the entered notes. Currently all notes use the instrument number 4 which was chosen from the instrument list when I entered the notes. I'll change a couple of notes to use the instrument number 5. Let's listen how that sounds. As you might have noticed, when a note is triggered, all previous notes playing in that same column will stop playing. If I want to stop a note before the next note is triggered, I can enter a note end by pressing this key shown in the image. That key inserts a zero in the E column. The E stands for note end location. Zero meaning the very beginning of the row. I can enter a larger number manually if I want the note to end later in that row. Same goes for S column, which stands for note start location. I can use this column if I want the note to start playing somewhere later than at the very beginning of the row. I can set the velocity for each note by entering a value in this column, titled VL for velocity. This column uses hexadecimal numbers, as do all the other columns which contain numbers. 00, zero being the smallest value and FF being the largest. FF is a hexadecimal for 255 in your regular numbers. 80 in hexadecimal is half of that. I can remove data by hitting this key. The next key on its right side removes data from more than one column at the same time. And if I want to quickly remove even larger chunks of data, I can paint areas by holding down the shift key and moving inside the MIDI clip. Alternatively, I can just use mouse to paint the area I want. Then I hit delete or backspace key. Also note that you can easily move rows of data up and down with delete, backspace and insert keys. If you're using a laptop which doesn't have the insert key, you can use shift and backspace to do the same thing.
legato notes can be made by entering the letter L into the instrument column. Here's a quick tip about how to enter chords quickly and easily. I want to enter my chord here on another track inside my MIDI clip. I hold down the ALT key. Now the whole row turns blue, indicating that I'm in a chord entering mode. Now I can enter the notes for my chord. I just keep playing different notes until I find something I like. When I stop pressing the ALT key, the chord command appears in that row automatically. The chord will always use the last three notes I played. You can also enter chords by pressing ALT G R instead of ALT. They do the exact same thing. 